Good afternoon to you. Mark Seth with HurricaneTrack.com. It is Wednesday, the 8th day of September 2021. Hurricane Outlook and discussion time for you. What are we going to talk about today? Well, we got Larry in the Atlantic, and that's going to bring some impacts to Bermuda. Uh, kind of indirect slash direct impacts. It's going to rain. It's going to be windy because of it. Some high surf, some breaking waves, maybe some beach erosion, maybe a power outage here or there. We'll see. So definitely some impacts from Larry for Bermuda. And then maybe some impacts further down the road up in Newfoundland. And then those indirect impacts. Uh, the definition of that stuff is kind of fuzzy. But, I mean, if the hurricane is causing an impact, it's an impact. But anyway, uh, the swells are going to continue to move out. They're starting to arrive on the North American shores, the Bahamas, and, of course, the north-facing beaches in the Caribbean. And as I have been saying over and over, those swells can be dangerous if you don't take them seriously they can cause life-threatening rip currents and even just those large breaking waves right there at the beach interface can cause neck and back injuries and that can be problematic it certainly can so be careful if you're out there all right and we'll talk about 91l in the gulf a new system in the eastern pacific and what may be lying ahead in you know, waiting for us down the road we shall see all right so the shot here of most of the western hemisphere there's Larry out over the Atlantic, nice large canopy of cirrus outflow. It's not as well organized. It looks kind of chunky. You know what I mean? Like different chunks of the convection have been taken out for one reason or another. Maybe some dry air getting wrapped into it. Possibly some shear at some of the levels of the atmosphere. Nevertheless, not quite as strong as it was, but it's a large hurricane with a large area of wind and that will impact Bermuda here uh, directly coming up. There's Bermuda right there already getting some cloud cover from it and eventually you're going to get some squalls I think. This is a cold front trough coming through probably some really nice weather behind it over here big old high pressure area sitting over the Great Basin and beyond then there's 91L in the Gulf of Mexico where water temperatures and upper ocean heat content remain quite formidable uh, this could go on to develop briefly as a quick name storm as it comes up into the Florida Panhandle and then scoots offshore here. I'll show you that on the GFS operational in just a moment. Then we have TD number 15 here in the Eastern Pacific. And look at that. That's the ghost of something. Is that Nora that eventually went up there? And I don't know, but it's definitely the ghost of a, of a cyclone. Very, very low clouds. No convection associated with it. Kind of neat to see. All right, so let's move on here and take a look at our tracking chart, the interactive map off the Hurricane Track Insider site. Got to widen it out. The big Mercator projection showing all the way up here to the Arctic Circle. Hey, Windows is talking to me somewhere in the office. Uh, but why? Because, well, we have a huge track uh, line going out to five days. Uh, this would be post-tropical up through here as it scoots east of Greenland, meaning that it loses that warm core. It kind of loses, well, it doesn't kind of, it absolutely loses that energy source of the very warm water of the tropics and eventually the subtropics. And once it gets up in the North Atlantic there, scooting past maybe Cape Race there in Newfoundland, um, it, it encounters colder water and that saps the energy from it. So it kind of collapses and spreads out and it becomes a much larger wind field churning up the ocean. That's a big problem for the sword fleet up there that are doing the sword fishing, the long lining. Ships out there just crossing the Atlantic doing their thing with commerce and whatever maritime interests. This can be a big problem for them. Believe me, they have meteorological services and hopefully one would assume they know all about it. Then over here in the East Pack we do have uh, this next system, actually it's a tropical storm now, look at that, it's not a depression, it's Olaf. And uh, yeah, we had Elsa earlier and Olaf now, isn't that cute? Uh, Olaf there off the coast of Mexico, forecast to become not more than a tropical storm. I thought maybe it would say hurricane. I bet it still becomes a hurricane in here somewhere. I mean, why not? Some of these systems have overachieved this year. 75, 85 mile per hour hurricane just off the Baja up here wouldn't surprise me. You could get some of those peripheral impacts up here along Cabo San Lucas and Land's End or the end of the world or whatever they call it down there. The edge of the world? Something. <laughs> I can't remember all of my place names. I just know that Cabo San Lucas 
is right there at the southern tip and the forecast track takes it fairly comfortably far enough away to avoid any direct impacts you know major impacts we should say now as for Bermuda which is sitting right here the core of Larry what's left of the core should pass nice and comfortable uh, a nice and comfortable margin to the east of Bermuda and as promised I'll show you what the um, camera looks like that we have there from our supporter and crowdfunding partner Howard this is really neat all of those clouds you see right there these milky clouds you got the low-level cumulus clouds here those are just moisture in the low levels of the atmosphere but this is the upper level outflow associated with Larry so let's go back to the satellite animation those clouds that I just showed you that's that right there you know just kind of neat to see us weather geeks like that kind of stuff I do hopefully you do too and we appreciate it. let's just look at it full screen for a second look at that there's the Atlantic over in the distance right there beyond the trees nice green lush vegetation here and that is the cirrus outflow of Larry uh, well to the southeast of Bermuda we'll check on this again tomorrow to see that see how things progress looking at our areas of interest from a vorticity perspective there's 91L bundling the energy pretty well so yeah it could come uh, become a tropical storm briefly or a depression right before it comes into the Florida Panhandle maybe somewhere near Panama City and vicinity uh, gonna be a big rainmaker all of that energy right there just imagine if I could pick that up and kind of copy and paste it and drag it as a layer like in Photoshop and move it across this way which is what I'll do on the GFS animation that I'm going to show you in a minute but that whole mass is going to move across that region and that means weather yes yeah, sensible weather that you can feel that can impact you rain onshore flow some storm surge maybe higher waves that kind of thing squally weather and even the threat of severe weather with some of those rain bands and then there is Olaf trying to make a name for itself more than just a semi annoying Disney animated movie character and then there's the really well-defined um, vorticity signature of Larry and then there's some energy trying to come off Africa and some more energy sitting out in the open Atlantic but things out this way are pretty stable right now a little bit of uh, Saharan air intrusion just dry mid-level air and we're not in this favorable phase of the Madden Julian oscillation currently so we're in this lull I mean lull right I mean we got Larry and 91L I don't know what lull we're talking about but apparently there's a lull at least in new activity coming off Africa and moving its way towards the West and nothing in the foreseeable future put it that way so real quick just a I continue to be marveled at this a quick look at the sea surface temperature anomalies here this is the NOAA coral reef watch this is the daily update and it's always a day behind so this is yesterday but look at this big warm stripe here in the eastern Atlantic the Northwest Atlantic still well above normal most of the main development region at or slightly above the long-term average but look right here that's the carving out of the heat content that Larry has done that's what these hurricanes do they remove the heat from the upper ocean heat content area of our oceans and they distribute that heat from the low levels into the stratosphere dispersing it away as it goes so you translate the energy out of the oceans kind of literally wick it up and turn it into condensation condensation is a warming process you warm the atmosphere you take all that energy from the ocean transfer it into the atmosphere and that whole mess just blows all up into the northern latitudes and you kind of take some of that heat out that's one of the purposes of these tropical cyclone heat engines and look in the Pacific this La Nina pattern starting to kind of take root here in fact I want to go on, on my Twitter real quick I forgot I should have pulled this up it's my fault that's okay I want to go into Ben Knoll real quick we'll search you'll see who all I've been searching for lately hmm who's Mark been searching for um, there's no way to bookmark these people that I know of I know you can create a list or whatever but I digress let's check this out this is what Ben posted a couple of hours ago and then earlier than that the new uh, NMME which is the North American Multimodal Ensemble looking like a pretty solid La Nina shaping up October November December 
January 2022, February, March, hmm, and then to April, it's May. It's like, whoa, wait a minute. I know we're, you know, it's like, Mark, come on. It's still this hurricane season, but keep your eyes on that. Through the winter, it could have tremendous implications for the globe. It's like a big old air conditioner out there when that's colder than average. And you can see it really gets pronounced there into the winter months. While the Atlantic generally stays pretty warm, yes, this has implications for next year's hurricane season as well. We'll get to that later, but man, that is quite an interesting look from this ensemble package. Always appreciate the tweets from Ben Knoll and these nice thematic animation maps. All right, a close-up of the anomaly map that I was showing you previously. Some cooler water temperatures, these are the anomalies, cooled down. I mean, look, that's right at neutral, right there in the middle. That's dead zero, snake eyes, or whatever you call it, zero. Uh, you get it. It's nothing. It's neutral. One tiny patch of below average, but look at the rest of the Gulf here, especially the Western Gulf, including around the area of Louisiana where Ida impacted some of those water temperatures one to one and a half degrees look there's the one degree celsius gradient there's two and you can just kind of eyeball this and look and see in here especially the western gulf almost two degrees celsius above the long-term average and then this large pocket of warmth relative to average east of the islands and then this really sticks out in the bahamas yeah we got a long way to go this hurricane season plenty of energy still available one thing to note, if 91L, you know, whatever it does as it moves up through this area, the threat, marginal threat of some severe weather in those rain bands, if you've got radar scope or whatever the apps are that you use, and I just want to just kind of show you, I'm no sponsorship or anything from radar scope. I'm a believer in their products. I'm just going to kind of show you what it looks like down in Florida real quick. This is a good example. We will look at Eglin Air Force Base. So that's what it looks like. See it right there, close up? It doesn't show up too good. It's kind of a glare. But use Radar Scope or whatever free app. Radar Scope's, I think, 10 bucks or so. And keep your eyes on the radar down there because those bands are going to come in. And in those bands, you could get, and even out ahead of them, you want to look for those little signature kidney bean shaped storms or anything where it kind of curls up within a band. Those could have some tornadoes. Or at the very least, some strong downburst winds, very heavy rainfall. That's why the marginal risk is up in that region. So keep your eyes on that. All right, use your radar app, whether it's Radar Scope or some free app. Use it. You got it. Take advantage of it. All right, looking at the GFS over the next uh, few days, there's 91L from the GFS analysis this morning. Doesn't look like much, but let's see how this advances. There's what you look for. That's the signature of a mature aging hurricane that's larry and we'll put this into motion see what we got uh, this is valid basically right now as i'm putting this together and it heads on up towards the panhandle making landfall later this evening if you want to call it landfall moving up across the southeast near the i-10 corridor roughly and then out into the atlantic as you see larry there by tomorrow morning and then tomorrow afternoon by the time i do the update maybe i'll do it a little early there's Bermuda, there's Larry passing by. We will check Howard's camera to see what that shows. But you see what happens there. Larry goes on out, 91L, eh, dissipates, whatever, some of that energy. You can see it right there, kind of hangs out. And then some more energy along this trough axis in the western gulf. That could bring a lot of rainfall for the Rio Grande Valley, whether or not it develops. Remember, deep tropical moisture has what we call very high PWAT, P-W-A-T. All you budding meteorologists out there, you know what that stands for, the precipitable water, PWAT, P-W-A-T. Very high precipitable water values coming out of that very warm western gulf. No name storm is needed to give you a disaster. All right, understand that. Very heavy rain, some of the modeling indicating uh, a lot of heavy rain for portions of the Rio Grande Valley from that impulse there. Over the next few days, you can see the big extension of the high western uh, portions of the Bermuda High ridging well to the west, shoving any activity to the western Gulf and into Texas. So just be aware of that. And this is out at day five. And just to show you through day six and day seven, 
not much coming along. Maybe a little impulse right there around day seven. You see that in the vicinity of the Bahamas. Yep, you got to keep your eyes on any impulse that tries to spin up. You never know. That's a week out. Just something to watch. Let's take the telestration away, shall we? In the East Pacific, that is the signature of Olaf. That is the signature of that ghost system that I was mentioning earlier. That could be the leftovers of, of Nora. I don't remember what it is, but that's fine. Doesn't matter. Uh, it's not affecting anybody. So watch uh, Olaf right here, and you'll see it gets close to the Baja, but kind of, you know, skirts by. I mean, on the GFS, that's a landfall, if not really close to it. And that's only 42 hours out. So maybe the Hurricane Center will make some adjustments at the 5 o'clock uh, update for those folks out there. We'll see. So yeah, along the Baja, you got to pay attention to this as it goes by. And then it weakens over the cooler waters. A small system, maybe some moisture gets kind of wicked up off of it into the desert southwest up here. But not much to really make it do that just yet. We see that usually uh, later in the season when these deep troughs build in out west and curve these Pacific cyclones up like that. Not seeing that just yet. All right, so want to mention this because, boy, it has grown. I appreciate it. And the cooperative of all these people on Patreon, they appreciate it too. I updated the background image and the logo there, Hurricane Track on Patreon. $10 a month is where you start. $25, you get some more benefits all the way down um, to the... Well, the $100 level is sold out. That's awesome. But look at that. Over a 1,000 people supporting this amazing project. Everything that we accomplished during IDA and everything we are going to accomplish going forward in the field as well as developing new content. This original series that I'm producing, The Hurricane Highway. We have our own library of original content for our uh, members, our cooperative. That's the best way to call it. Our investors. So it's not too late to become a part of it. It's never too late. Stick around year after year. Watch this grow. And, you know, that interactive map I was showing you, that is part of the Hurricane Track Insider Access that you get. And all these cameras that we have around the country, these are different supporters of ours in the Colorado Springs area. This is Nevada. And we actually have a weather station out there. It's pretty toasty. 99 degrees out in Pahrump. That's out in the desert. And let's see if we can get it to play. Come on. Now the internet's dragging. But yep, yeah, it always likes to do that to me, doesn't it? The good old Nest system. But you know what? You know when it does work? When we put them out in the field and a hurricane knocks it off its perch and it goes in the storm surge for three hours. If you haven't seen that time lapse video, it's on Twitter. And I'm at Hurricane Track on Twitter. Go back a few posts. It was a two minute time lapse kind of summary that I put together of the Frenier landing camera. Uh, that was a Nest Cam, and boy, it, it just kept on streaming, even though it got knocked off the piling there. That is what we do through the crowdfunding that you all help to provide. So if you're in the position to join up and become a part of that, you know, it's never too late. It's never too late. We'd love to have you, and we can accomplish even more than we've already done. Just imagine where we're going to be able to go from here. All right, I'm going to go and put this on YouTube for, here, for you. That's where I'm going to go from here. And I uh, wish you guys a great rest of your Wednesday afternoon. As always, thanks for tuning in and giving me a part of your day from whatever device you happen to be doing so from. It's great to have you there. I'm Mark Sutter for HurricaneTrack.com. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.